Hello guys. Uh, time for another YouTube clip, I think. Maybe you guys are just a bit bored at home on lockdown. Um, or maybe uh, I'm slightly entertaining. I'm not sure which. Both are quite depressing, really. Anyway, you wanted some information on uh, how to reinforce a fin box. Uh, in particular, a deep tuttle fin, fin box. Um, because, as you saw from my last one, I reinforced this one. So if you take a look a little bit closer, you'll see that it's really hard, okay? And uh, the deep tuttle fin is really secure. And when you put the um, mast for the foil in there, it now provides really good stability. Um, do you need to do this? Well, maybe. I mean, look, this one's quite thick. This, this, the area is thick. And uh, when I was windsurfing one day with the foil in, it's, the foil started to move and I was starting to windsurf a bit nose down. And uh, as I was coming nose down, I could hear some of the, the foil cracking. So uh, that wasn't a good move, was it? Um, my other board, this one's much thinner. And uh, the space between the deep total fin and the fin box is very thin. And if I was gonna reinforce this one, I'd have to build it up more, uh, which is possible. But at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any movement in this. I would say as soon as there starts to become some movement uh, in the mast, in the play, and you start just um, windsurfing nose down, you're going to need to reinforce your board. So obviously that's what I did with that one, and I'm just going to talk you through how I did that. First of all, I've just got to show you this clip of what it looked like once I removed all of the parts from inside the board so that it was just the thin box exposed. So this is my board. This is the top of the fin box, and this is how much play is in there. It's really quite solid. And that's the same amount of play that I had. And it's completely, on the other side of the board, it's completely undamaged and untouched. And it looks as good as new. So this is a bit more of a close-up of what it looks like with the plywood and the fiberglass in there, and the epoxy in there. Note that I've put some big washers around there so that I don't get any epoxy in there to affect the holes. So here's some of that fiberglass cloth I was just talking about that you use to epoxy it in, and I literally shove that in the hole with the plywood. It's very thin, very light, and this is fiberglass cloth. The epoxy I used is this one here, and this is the resin base. This is the hardener, and you can get fast, or you can get slow. Okay, and I bought these from that company there, Easy, Com Easy Composites. And uh, it's quite expensive stuff, but it's really strong. And um, be careful not to use it too concentrated, or it can set fire. So, just a bit of a health warning there. So the exposure of that thin box was just here. And that was where I had the play, just there. Okay? So... What that looked like from there is like this. So, I used a router, as you can see, to route out all of this area here, okay? Once I'd routed it out, I filled it up with some epoxy resin, but first I put in bits of plywood. Can you see that? And this stuff around the outside here is fiberglass cloth, which I used to line it with before putting the epoxy resin in. So, as you can see, now this is a finished product. Some of this is coming off, look. I used uh, contact adhesive spray, but I'm gonna have a go at using this stuff, um, which is a contact adhesive uh, neoprene, um, and hopefully that one will work better. I've been recommended that one. So, um, that's what I did. And uh, I've had many hours windsurfing after that, and I know with confidence that this one is strong as hell. So um, if you're going to do it, I'm happy to answer any questions on it. But if you don't do it, uh, you're going to have to at some stage if it starts to creak and move forward. Good luck.